Today I'm gonna to show you step by step how I milk our cow on our homestead so that she stays healthy, she doesn't get mastitis, and her milk is safe for our family to drink. This is where we're currently milking our cow. We have the milking stanchion where she's going to stand eating while I milk her. Currently, I'm machine milking. When I first started out, I was hand milking. I started out hand milking because it was all I could afford. <laughs> Advantages of hand milking are less equipment, less expensive to get it set up, but you do need the right cow to hand milk. So the advantage of machine milking is it is faster than hand milking. So I can get four gallons of milk out of our cow in eight minutes. I could be out to the barn, machine milk, and get back in the house. Another advantage of the machine milking is the milk you're getting, as long as you prep the udder and the teats right, will be very, very clean. Now I'll just take you through the basic steps of setting up the milker. So to hook everything up, this is a milk hose. This is the part where all the milk comes into. We put in here. Just think of how this goes on the cow, like this. The milk flows out of the teats, into the milk hose. Milk comes out of the milk hose into the bucket. Then we have our hose, which runs to the pulsator from the pump. And that's what gives us our suction. So that's the hose that provides our suction to our pulsator. It pulsates and it doesn't just constantly provide suction because that will ruin your cow's udder. Now our milker is all set up and ready to go. I haven't turned on the pump yet though because it's easier for you to hear me without it running. This is a custom mix we have our feed mill make, but you can also get a mix at Agway or Tractor Supply, any local feed mill if you're looking for a dairy feed. Uh, then I have a little bit of beet pulp and alfalfa pellets that she likes. We're not getting very much grass right now, they're just on hay, so I give her a little extra of everything. That'll take her about three days to finish. <laughs> She's a slow eater. All right, we're all set up in here. I'm going to go get fancy now and turn on my pump. Mm. The pump is in here. Proud of this, this was a, a Craigslist find. This is a surge pump and my lovely husband was able to pipe it through the ceiling into the milk room. This is what gives us our suction, which helps run the pulsator to milk the cow. You need one of these if you have a milker. Plug it in. So let's go get Fancy. Fancy knows the routine. We've done this for the past three months, twice a day. Now we're down to once a day milking, thankfully, because twice a day can get kind of grueling. She doesn't have a cap on her. We took the cap off. This is the head gate. I close this. Actually with Fancy, I forget it most of the time because she doesn't really need it. <laughs> but some cows need it so they stay in place and can't move back and forth too much. You get cows moving back and forth, they're stepping on you, they're stepping on your hoses, it's not fun. So that's nice to lock them in place. We have a video where you can learn how to build this stanchion. My husband did it himself. We're gonna use a couple different two by sixes and two by fours to frame out a nice head gate. And we're also gonna build a feeding box so the cow can come in here and feed. First thing I'm going to do when either hand milking or machine milking is put on gloves. Less because I'm afraid of what the cow can give me and more because I'm worried about what I can give the cow. I'm not able out here to wash my hands with hot soapy water before I milk. So I put on the gloves because I don't wanna give her any staph infections that can permanently cause her mastitis, super, super hard to cure, and will lead to either her being a three-quartered cow, a cow who can't milk out of all four teats, 
or one who we have to put down because she just has chronic mastitis. So if there's one thing you take away from this, I know it's not what we think of when we picture our idyllic milking scene, but find a way to keep your hands very, very clean. Either wash them before you milk and touch the udder and teats or wear gloves. It does not cause the cow any discomfort. These are very smooth. A calf's tongue is very rough. Use this with a little salve. Just to give yourself some lubrication when you're milking, which you need to use on your hands sometimes anyways. If you have to strip the teat, you're sliding, you'll need lubrication anyways. Wear gloves. I know so many stories of people who said, I didn't need to wear gloves, don't need to wear gloves. Their cow comes down with staph A mastitis. It's environmental, it's everywhere, but us touching these teats when the teat ends are open can introduce all these bacteria, all these pathogens that we don't want to give to our cow. Next, I'm going to use a teat dip and a non-return cup. I wanna make everything as clean as possible at this stage because I'm opening up the ends of these teats that have been sealed until right now when we're milking. Make sure the udder's clean, so brush off any hair, any debris. Then use a teat dip. For instance, we use iodine, so it's killing any bacteria that wanna get up inside there before we get there. Now we're gonna squirt a few squirts of milk that's milk that's been sitting in there. It's got all the yucky stuff in. We want to get rid of those. Open up those teat ends and now she's ready to be milked. We'll put the milker on. Uh, this is something if you're milking with a machine for the first time, it can feel like you're trying to like <laughs> wrangle an octopus under the cow to get it all to suck on it when you need it to. Wow, first try. Oh, I do it every day. This is not a problem with her, it's Luna that's the problem. All right, there we go. Everything's on, good. She's being milked out now. Yeah, to milk her out completely took about four to five minutes. I can feel each quarter. At first they were very firm full of milk, ready to be milked out. Now I feel they're much more flabby. So she's been milked out, she's good. She's all done. And I'm gonna take the milking cloth off of her now because she's all milked out. Boy, you were so good, Nancy. All right, she looks good. I'm gonna let Freddie eat. Then we post dip. When it, stop, everybody. Let me give him this so he's less fussy. There, the cat meows at me the whole time because he knows he gets milk, so now he'll be quiet. <laughs> if you're leaving your calf on, your cow, the calf will suck from the udder from a teat. We'll leave a lot of slobber on there. What that does is that, that prevents bacteria from getting up inside the teat because the teat ends are open now and we don't want any bacteria getting up in there. Because she doesn't have the calf on her, I'm going to post dip her. So that coats each teat and the ends and prevents it from any bacteria getting in there. We'll let her out into the pasture so she's not going to be laying in big piles of manure. That helps too. But using a post dip is very important. And she's all done, she's ready to go. Watch how well she gets off of this stanchion. Sometimes when we're setting things up, we worry about like, can the cow fit there? Which is totally a concern, but you'll be amazed how much they can pivot to get out of an area, especially once they get used to it. <laughs> the most important things to remember about milk, milking your cow, keep her clean, keep your equipment clean, keep your hands clean, keep her udder clean, and then we get the milk inside and chill it quickly. There's equipment involved, even if you're just milking with a, a bucket and a filter. I found this little cart, actually I found it in the basement of the house we live in now. <laughs> it's really nice to carry my milk equipment. This all gets heavy when it's full of milk. 
Normally my cameraman takes care of this for me, all the pulling, but... Aw, sweet. And don't forget, before you get a cameraman, <laughs> disease test your cameraman. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that your cameraman is from Quality Genetics. Check a nice teeth. mustache would be uh, preferable, but not absolutely necessary. Check his feet. This is one of the big advantages to me for machine milking is I'm back to the house before anybody misses me. As long as my milk is keeping well, I stick with the hot soapy water cleanup for them. If I start to notice that the milk's not keeping as long, that's a sign to me like there's something going on you need to give all the equipment a good sterilization. I'll use Star Sam. And I'll do that once a week to give everything a really good sanitizing. All right, this is a con. Con of the milk machine is the cleanup. But once you get the routine, it doesn't take, honestly, it doesn't take much longer than cleaning a bucket. Because I gotta clean the bucket anyways, and the strainer. So I add a few hoses in. Thankfully I have hot water in the garage. At our last house I didn't, so I would take everything inside to the kitchen and wash it. It is nice having a dedicated milk sink out here just for storage of everything. I use a strainer that fits on a ball jar. A filter from a dairy supply company or Amazon carries these too. They don't make this kind of strainer anymore. I got it 10 years ago for when we were milking the goats and I haven't been able to find it like it since. But there are other ones if you look up a milk strainer that fits on a ball jar, a wide jar. I prefer using the half gallon ball jars, the wide mouth ones. So if you ever see one of my jars and it has like a poison face on it, <laughs> don't drink, no. Because I was saving all the cream in this jar, but the kids kept drinking it. <laughs> so I, was like, I need like a sad face on this jar so they know not to drink it. Now we start washing up. Basically anything that the milk touches, we wash with the hot soapy water. So I don't wash the pulsator because the milk doesn't come anywhere near that. But I wash, the pulsator fits on this. I wash this because under here touches the milk. Then we wash the gasket from the lid. There's a special brush that they make for the inflations. See this little brush part goes in there. Cleans out that. And it might seem like this is complicated at first because anything you start for the first time is going to feel complicated. But my 11 and 12 year old can wash up for me after every milking. It is something that once you do it a few times becomes easier. There are some milkers that have a clean in place system. If we, if I had a pump here, I could, I could use a pump to wash this out and there are videos online about that. So look up clean in place milk system. Those are really cool. But both of these I got second hand so I don't have anything like that. This is the best part. People wonder why like, you have to sell your milk for $8, $10 a half gallon. Like, see why, there's so much work that goes into it. It usually takes me 10 minutes to do the cleaning. I like to dry it all up. 
and then let the other stuff air dry. If you think this looks awesome, having your own cow to go and milk, your farm fresh milk every day, but you have some questions. We have a class all about that. This is an excerpt from your first cow 101. It's a class we have in our Pioneer Library, which has a ton of other cow info. We're gonna give you a sneak peek into that entire class. Click here for a link. Good taste is easy to recognize. <laughs>